of Breakthrough Diversity. Uh, it's a, a group that's been formed to uh, address that, that issue, diversity, inclusion and equity. And uh, we're going to walk you through. We have a group of panelists uh, that make up our group, our, our leads for different strands of diversity. And they are going to talk you through different aspects, different dimensions of what diversity makes up. Uh, and I will outline how this session uh, will run in a moment and we'll, uh, I'll cover that shortly with some of the uh, timings of the sessions and, and some house rules if you like. Uh, but we first, we're going to start with one of our speakers answering probably the most fundamental question that hopefully everybody's joined this call for, uh, exactly what is diversity? And at this point, I'm gonna hand over to Leslie. Diversity is dynamic. There are basically three types of diversity that really shape our identities. There's the demographic diversity, experiential diversity, which are our affinities, our hobbies, our abilities. Cognitive diversity, it's how we personally approach problems and really think about things. All these types or these types of diversity really shape our identity. Having a diverse group of people on the same team aids in viewing issues differently leading to distinct solutions and it really fosters innovation. It's a fact. Various studies continue to show diverse teams win. They win in the marketplace. Diverse teams are smarter. Diverse teams perform better financially. Inclusion are truly authentic behaviors and actions that ensure people are welcomed, respected, and valued. It creates that belonging culture. You are accepted for who you are and what you bring on a personal level. Equity is an approach that really ensures that everyone has access to the same opportunities. Equity recognizes that advantages and barriers exist and that as a result, we all aren't starting from the same place. In addition, equity says that you're going to tackle the equity issues the underlying reason why there may be injustice and your willingness to promote justice, impartiality, and fairness. Equity is a choice that organizations and people make. The question is, are we willing to meet people where they are to raise their level of success? D, I, and E, diversity, inclusion, and equity. Diversity is a fact. Inclusion is an outcome based on culture that you build every single day. And equity is a choice that we all have to make. Mm -hmm. Barry, back to you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Leslie. Um, a, a great, in, a insightful and helpful start for everybody, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, and you'll hear more from Leslie as one of our diversity strand leaders uh, talking later in this webinar. Um, but before we move on to our next speaker, I'd like to cover off some of the practicalities around the webinar itself. Um, so uh, towards the, the uh, half of the screen, you've got your uh, Q&A button, uh, which we'd ask you to use uh, whenever you want to ask a question. Uh, Linda is uh, our kind of administrator to, to this session. So she's going to keep an eye on the questions that are being raised. And what we'll do is probably at the end of each speaker's set, if there's a specific question uh, that you know, we want to flag up and, and address to that speaker, then we'll probably do that question at that point. Um, and then at the same time, towards the end of the entire session, we'll have a, a wrap up Q&A session. So any questions that we don't cover off from within the individual strands we will uh, we'll try and answer at that point there. Uh, the other thing just to warn you about is that um, the chat option, be careful if you're using the chat option to message somebody, any of the other participants in the group or one of the speakers, be sure that you pick out the individual's name. If you uh, don't, uh, it will message the entire group. So it may be that you want to ask a specific question of, of an individual or message somebody who's also on the call. Uh, so just be aware of that. And um, what I'm going to do now is uh, just talk through and give a quick overview of TAMS. Uh, so Linda, could you flash up the uh, slides for the uh, TAMS section for me, please? 
So, uh, as an intro, um, okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the, the, the overarching uh, situation that, that occurred, uh, everybody's aware of this. Uh, unfortunately, the, the travel industry, like many, has been, has been struck by the impact of the pandemic and the, the COVID virus. But what it's done is it's given the whole industry and everybody within it uh, the opportunity to step back and rethink how we do things. Uh, question whether some of the systems and the, the process we have in place are right for our business today and going into the future, albeit, uh, you know, we're not quite clear what, what, how that, that future might unfold. So TAMS was formed to, uh, as, as you can see from, from this slide, was formed to effectively bring together uh, a collaborative grassroots uh, independent society, it's actually been set up as a charity, of business travel industry professionals. So it's everybody involved in the entire supply chain. And the idea is that uh, this group has come together and is, uh, is, is looking at and exploring ways to improve uh, collaboration across the industry to improve those processes and to maybe uh, you know, bring about a, a, an overall better experience for both the customers and, and all the suppliers that, that are within the industry. And in terms of who's joined that group now, and, and sorry, uh, yeah, who's, who's joined that group now, there's uh, over 2,500 members already. Um, and the, the makeup, as you can see from, from the second slide, uh, there's quite a strong showing of women in the group, which is, which is great. Um, and it is an organization that's spread across the world. And within this, this group, uh, what's, what's also happened, if we go to the next slide, the organizational structure is set up in a series of committees. That's not the next slide. <laughs> um, uh, you should have a slide showing the committees of TAMS. Is that not working, Linda? No, that's working. That's what we've got. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got technology, uh, disruption and innovation, training, marketplace, community engagement, data research, uh, breakthrough diversity, which is our group, uh, other groups focusing on sustainability, the finance and ethics of the TAMS organization and how people work within it, uh, the verticals, which is uh, looking at specific uh, sectors within the, the different supply chain, and uh, job search, careers, and mentoring space. So uh, we fit into to this committee. Each, each committee uh, has groups very much like our own where we're focusing on specifics, where we can offer advice, share knowledge, uh, and we want to invite as many people as we can across the travel industry space into these groups if they have something to uh, contribute and or something to share. Uh, at the very end of this session, we will have uh, another slide which will detail out uh, a number of uh, contact points. So if, if you want to join our group and or any other group within the TAMS organization, uh, you'll be able to do that. And the, the, the website that we'll show will also give more detail around the, the focus for each of these different committees and groups uh, and what they offer up. Okay, um, Linda, have we got Carol on now? Yes, yes we do. Okay, mm -hmm. right and uh, so uh, we're going to, uh, sorry could you put up the agenda as well? Yeah. Before you put uh, Linda up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So as you can see, we, we have a, a, a structure that's going to walk us through the different parts of, of our group, uh, co-leads or leads of each strand of the diversity uh, area or topic issue uh, are going to talk individually about their specific focus and their passions. Uh, but to begin with, I'm going to introduce Carol Fergus, who is uh, our co-lead along with Linda for the entire group. And... Um, in doing so, uh, I'd just like to highlight a little bit about Carol. Uh, she's been in the travel industry for over 20 years, uh, holding leadership positions in organizations like Nomura, UBS, and, and is now the Global Travel and Meetings Manager for, at Fidelity. And on a more kind of personal note, because we're all human beings, Carol is now uh, looking forward to becoming a grandma in the next few weeks. Uh, and there's no doubt that she'll be an amazing one. 
But at this point, I'm going to hang over to Carol. Hi, everyone. Can you see me? Hello. Because I can yeah. still see. Yeah. OK. Hi, everyone. Um, Leslie, listening to Leslie, she definitely has set the scene and firmly put a stake in the ground for uh, the DI and East uh, group within TAMS. For those of you who don't know me, I usually speak threefold and from the heart. But for this event, I decided to write down what it is that I want to say, because it's so important that the message we all deliver today will be memorable and also extremely inspiring. When Susan and Joe Lloyd asked Linda, my co-lead and I, to join TANS and lead the Diversity, Inclusion and Equity Group, we did not just walk through the door. We kicked it down and ran in. Such was our passion to be part of this community. As a result, we have a core group of 25 people, all volunteers, who have all voiced their passion in this space and joined a subgroup, we also, and we also have a name, Breakthrough Diversity. A lot has been done in a very few uh, short space of time. I could not let this day go by without mentioning Linda, my TAMS partner, a strong, amazing woman and dear friend. All will agree when I say that she is the glue that keeps us all together. Today is a demonstration of that, and you shall be hearing from Linda later. Linda and I may manage different disciplines within the travel industry and have different skills, but we both have a common goal and passion when it comes to diversity, inclusion and equity in our group. It's about the people, equality and equity for all. In our world, no one is too big to be humble. No one too small to have big ideas. We all have a seat at the table, a voice. One voice that says success, support, education, training, knowledge, strength, passion, drive, and an inner peace in knowing that we shall change, that we shall bring change to the travel and meeting industry. The diversity and inclusion vision and mission statement, which has been built together amongst our members is, we stand for guiding everyone in the corporate travel industry worldwide to understand how diversity, inclusion and equity impacts equality for all. Our vision is to break through current thinking and behaviour to create opportunity in less biased space across the corporate travel industry. Our mission ensure everyone, regardless of race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, ethnicity, class, disability, nationality, and age can freely obtain advice and guidance on improving diversity, inclusion, and equity in their organizations, and to positively impact one's career, aspirations, education, mentoring for personal growth. Our goal is to encourage, celebrate, when people stop listen, when people stop, think and listen. And practice diversity, inclusion and equity behaviors and start having uncomfortable conversations that improve awareness, creates understanding and impacts culture. It is an honor for both Linda and I to be steering this, this amazing group and to be part of the TAMS community. Today, you will hear from the leaders of each of the strands within the DNI and Equity Group and why these individuals are the right people to lead this agenda going forward. I now hand back to Barry. Okay, thank you very much, Carol. Uh, stirring words, great stuff. Uh, you definitely set us up uh, for the rest of this session. Uh, Linda, are there any questions that have popped in yet? Uh, I know it's a bit early on uh, in the process, but ha have any questions actually been fed in from any? Uh, no, qu no, no, no questions yet. Nothing yet. Okay. Okay. Right. So um, this is a bit weird because I'm now going to introduce myself, uh, <laughs> having already been talking for a little bit. Um, so I'm responsible, well, not responsible, I'm, I volunteered for uh, driving the marketing and communications for this group. Um, 
And my background uh, is I'm currently working as a project marketing consultant uh, for a, a mid-market TMC in the UK. Um, unfortunately, I've, I've felt the uh, impact of COVID uh, after I was made redundant from, from another uh, industry player, HRS, the hotel solutions provider. But I've got 25 years experience in senior marketing roles for a number of T TMCs. And I'm keen to bring that experience to bear and support this group. My big wish, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute, is, is to communicate diversity issues in an, in an authentic way mm -hmm. so that perceptions and behaviours change in a positive way across our industry. Uh, and just a small note of, of uh, warning, my family dog is a schnauzer. Uh, God help me if he starts barking, uh, because whatever part of the house I banish him to, you'll probably hear him. So apologies now. I know that's a bit of a cliched thing on a webinar, but um, it could happen. So my focus on marketing and communications for our group, uh, Breakthrough Diversity, will be very much about making sure our message is as effective as it can be, because it's vital we engage with you, the audience, and, and the industry in the right way so that you can develop a clear understanding of what diversity, inclusion, and equity are. And we hope that in turn, this will change your perspective and behavior and help shape how diversity can positively impact business right across the corporate travel industry um, and indeed across society as a whole. Uh, but from a purely communications point of view, uh, we need to be clear on a couple of things. First, who our audience is. As well as reaching into the grassroots of our industry, we need to make sure we engage with the C-suite, and of course, that includes middle management. Uh, and having done some research recently, I found that more and more businesses are realizing that improving diversity within companies and organizations is a real driver of increased productivity, employee satisfaction, and profitability. But despite this, many businesses still struggle to create the right environment an organizational culture that allows diversity to flourish. And I don't know, maybe it's because it's really hard to change people's attitudes and behaviors. Whether you're an employee at, at entry level or, or the boss of a huge corporation, um, you know, and when you do try, you're pitting yourself against hundreds, maybe thousands of years of social conditioning and entrenched interests that protect the status quo of keeping things the way they are. So my second point is that if diversity makes for better business, why aren't companies in our industry take, talking more about this and pushing for greater diversity like crazy? Again, maybe it's because business leaders prefer easy answers, quick wins, or they're under pressure from investors keener on short-term profitability versus long-term investments with kind of an uncertain ROI. And how does that kind of thinking translate when you're trying to communicate your corporation is a socially responsible business? Well, I'm sure we've all seen examples of marketing collateral on websites claiming our people are our best and most valuable asset. But the reality is that many organizations simply pay lip service to this aspect of corporate behavior or engage in virtue signaling. Being seen to be doing the right thing by publicizing their company has hit a metric showing a percentage of employees are a minority by color, by religion or ethnicity or that gender's balanced across the entire workforce. But if you dig in a little bit deeper, it's often still not representative within middle management or for executive leadership roles. So our messaging focus will be on engaging with our industry's business leaders as much as it will be on guiding people throughout the travel industry to help drive change bottom up and top down. And to that end, I'm passionate about keeping our messages clear and avoiding vague or misleading language that some corporations in our industry often use when talking about diversity. So I hope that's given you a bit of an idea of how we're gonna communicate going forward. Uh, and I'm now going to introduce you to our next leader, who's uh, Carmen. Um, although I should just quickly ahead before there again, Linda, any questions popping up? No questions, no questions. No questions. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm going to introduce Carmen. She is uh, the Senior Manager of Travel and Events at ICF, uh, has 25 years industry experience, uh, and as a recognised expert in her field, uh, Carmen personally assisted a number of companies in building state-of-the-art travel programmes. And she's also spent several years operating her own travel consulting firm. The biggest change that Carmen wants to see is more equity. Individuals from underrepresented groups of people 
of colour are often overlooked when it comes to a voice and participation. So what she's looking for is, a, you know, for people to have a seat at the table. Uh, Carmen's also been working remotely since March, also affected by this pandemic. Um, loves movies, reading and dogs. And her daughter recently fostered a pit bull called Cardi for five months before heading off to college. So over to you, Carmen. Well, thanks, Barry. And uh, certainly you have touched on some of the things that we want to deal with in our uh, strand of race and culture. And today when I'm talking about race, I'm referring to black and brown people. Uh, and I have a couple definitions because we want to also articulate the differences. Uh, but race is truly inborn. Uh, you cannot change your race, your complexion, your facial structure. Well, maybe cosmetically if you want to, but uh, certainly uh, your identity. It's also a group of people identifiable by certain traits, characteristics, etc. And we are not monolithic. Uh, we're not, uh, many times we're often lumped into the same category because of the color of our skin. And people think that we are all the same, but we are just as social and economically diverse as any other race of people. Uh, we're here to defy the myths about race and culture and to enlighten those that are interested in learning more. Now, culture is the commonality between people, regardless of race. So whether it's holidays, food, language, customs, religion, or even corporate cultures, it's a way of being, it's a lifestyle. And it's an outlook, a perception of the way things are or supposed to be. And when we talk about ethnicity, we're referring to membership of a culturally and geographically defined group that have shared cultural practices. People of the same race, though, can be of different ethnicities. And that is one of the things that I do want to make sure that we articulate, because you often hear the term African-American, but we have Linda and we have Carol, who are British citizens, who have come from different cultures, um, from we're all African descents, but our cultures and the way we look at things and the perspectives that we have often differ based on uh, those ethnicities. Uh, one of the questions that I wanna ask as it relates to both race and culture, and that is, do you see me? Or do you look through me or past me? Do you see me as an executive? Do you see me as credible? You know, when I speak, what I'm saying is true, or do you go and verify with someone else who looks like you? Because you don't believe that what I'm saying or don't believe you know, that I know what I'm talking about. Do you believe that someone that looks like you is the only one with the answer? Or do you see beyond your own world? Travel has been guilty of forming large cliques, only inviting, quote unquote, your world in and not seeing that others around you can be just as significant. And this goes across the stream of corporations in general. But do you see them? Do you only look inward and not outward? Do you see answers, seek answers outside of your circle? You know, we talk about culture and I'm going to use my daughter uh, as an example, my young freshman college student uh, who's just gone off to school. And she has some roommates whose culture and race are the same. They're from the same school, from the same area, and their outlook and exposure is very limited. And she said, mom, I can make the most basic comment. And they are like, what is that? Well, I'm challenging you to go beyond what you already know. There's more out there if you open your mind and if you open your heart. Travel is that one category that should be the most open and receptive by the very nature of our business. But we can be very cliquish, never venturing out beyond our own scopes. And so my question to you and the question that we are going to be answering along this journey is, do you value me and do you find me relevant? Back to you, Barry. Thank you, Carmen. Uh, again, 
Uh, any questions, Lynn? Pop in to the fly. No? Hello, Linda? Okay, I'm going to assume there's no questions. No, I was saying no, no questions. I was <laughs> just so emotional. So sorry about that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. No, no, yeah. no really, questions. really, really powerful stuff, Carmen. Uh, uh, yeah, really good. Um, so the next person up uh, in, in our group uh, is Craig, Craig Parton. Um, he's currently serving as an executive VP for sales and marketing at Synergy Global Housing. And he's worked within the travel and mobility space for 27 years. Uh, he's from Dallas, uh, Texas originally, uh, but he's recently relocated to Minneapolis, Minnesota from New York uh, to care for his husband's parents. Uh, and Craig has uh, explained to me his passion is, and he's going to dive into this, he wants equality or, or states, equality is not enough. Today it's all about equity. Uh, and another great dog lover, uh, two French Bulldogs, Isianella, uh, stuck with him in lockdown since mid-March. But over to you, Craig. The dogs will run through in a moment and you won't see my background. So apologies up front for that. Thank you very, very much. Um, I thought I, I also would start with a definition. Um, LGBTQ stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning or queer. And it's all about sexual orientation or, and or gender identity. Um, the rights that affect the LGBT community vary really greatly by country and jurisdiction, and they encompass everything from the recognition of same-sex marriage to the death penalty for being a homosexual. Um, it was only in 2011 that the United Nations Human Rights Council passed its first resolution that recognized LGBTQ rights. So I want us to all let that sink in for a moment, because that was only nine years ago. Forgive me if I get a bit emotional. The TAMS LGBT group hopes that we want to uh, increase the open representation of all of our professionals that are LGBTQ in the travel industry. We want to expand the understanding and appreciation of L the LGBTQ perspective. We want to find ways for the LGBTQ professional to lift each other up and also lift up the other disenfranchised and marginalized groups within our industry. And we want to find a way to ensure that we support all of the voices that are within the LGBTQ uh, community. They are different, um, but we all want to be heard. And as, as my description on the screen explains, I think that at our core, every one of us just wants to be a person. We don't want to be defined wholly by being a gay person or a black person. Uh, no matter what our sexual orientation is, we want to matter and we want to uh, be able to glorify and celebrate our differences. Um, I believe each of us is on a unique journey. Um, our group within TAMS hopes to aid in the understanding and acceptance of our different journeys. And along with that, a deep, deep appreciation for each other's experiences. All of those combined experiences are in some way different and that is the powerful tool that will ignite understanding and change amongst our most incredible travel industry. Each person, each company, and each country is at a different stage in their LGBTQ journey. And I hope that we can help everyone gain understanding of each other, acceptance of each other, and celebration of each other. I have a very, very wonderful friend and mentor that shared a story with me just the other day that I found to be one of the most enlightening things I've heard in the midst of all that's going on in our world right now. Um, I want everyone to close your eyes for just a moment, and I want you to imagine that there is a fence in front of you. Each one of us is given a box to stand on, and that box is the exact same size. So you can imagine that the tall person can see over the fence now, and the short person still can't see over the fence, and the disabled person in a wheelchair can't even get onto the box to even begin to see over the fence. That's what equality is, is everybody getting the same size box. Now I want you to imagine that same fence and everyone can see over it. And what that means for all of us is that some person may get two boxes, some person may get a ramp and a box, and some person may get the same box that they got to start with because they were tall enough to already see over the fence. That, my friends, is equity. Many of us have believed in and fought for equality for a long time. Now it's the time for all of us to believe in, fight for, and support equity for all of us that are diverse in our travel industry. Um, this is the path that the TAMS LGBT community will help blaze. 
So we want you to stay tuned and help us uh, and help all of our colleagues as we go on this journey together. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Craig. That was that was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The, uh, the uh, absolutely brilliant. Staying on a box, building equity. Fantastic. You, you pictured it perfectly for us. Thank you very much. Uh, and, then, and the next person uh, who's going to uh, speak up for us uh, is, is Leslie, who you heard from uh, right at the beginning, uh, describing beautifully what diversity is all about. And uh, Leslie is the global category leader uh, for travel at JLL. Uh, she's over 20 years experience in the hospitality industry and higher education, uh, serving in various leadership capacities for uh, both the global travel category leader and, and as an academic dean for an international school. Uh, her current role includes serving as an ad hoc professional development trainer and coach. Um, and across that academic experience, she has been uh, a curriculum designer, faculty developer, mentored adult learners, uh, done college instruction. She's also, and I'm really impressed with this, she's also uh, chair of Roosevelt University's Heller Graduate School of Business Advisory Board. I'm sorry I'm reading that out because that was quite something to remember uh, and is also uh, a DePaul University Ask Mentor. Outside of work, uh, Leslie enjoys bike riding uh, and the bit that I'm really interested in because I don't actually know what this involves, but I'm, I'm really, really curious, doing voiceovers. Uh, but the the thing that Leslie's going to talk about now is education and training. So uh, over to you, Leslie. Thanks, Barry. Um, education and training, it's the foundation. It creates the awareness, the reason for the change. So it's right in harmony with my passion on this topic is to really build an engaging industry platform to really secure and enhance the usage of diversity, equity, and inclusion principles as fundamental business operating procedures in the travel and meetings industry. That's a mouthful, but it's infusing the principles of diversity, inclusion, and equity throughout the industry. We start here at TAMS. Every strand will have access to education and training in reference to diversity, and more importantly, its application to that particular strand. So I want to pull out my training that I've done for years, all of my diversity consulting work that I've done, and bring it here to life with lots of help from NISA and many others to ensure that this messaging, this very basic messaging, is shifted throughout the entire TAMS organization and every strand. So we're going to support all of DNI&E strands. Um, our objective is to really to realize the mission of each and every strand, um, define and support the activity to realize the goals and the objective. Educate and training, sharing the best d and &E practices. The practices of 25 years ago for diversity, we were at the tolerance level. My, how diversity, equity, and inclusion has really grown and expanded. So we'll be up to date as to what's the best practice for training and education on diversity and inclusion and E and equity. So we're gonna turn theory into practice and we're gonna answer the tough questions that each and every strand has. How does an organization build an inclusive culture? How can an organization commit to equity? All of that can be accomplished through the different strands, but at the foundation of it, it's what's our personal understanding of what D, I, and E really mean to us personally. Do you understand what a bias is? Do we understand who we are as people? And what, over the years, what I've come to really appreciate is that if we pay enough attention of who we are as individuals, people will come to know that we really stand for something. And that's when we do our personal self-discovery as a group, as a team, as a unit. And then after which, we go deeper into our individual strands, delivering on our mission in reference to d and &E. and e So as a team, excited to steer it, head it up, and leverage all of the experience in diversity, inclusion, and equity 
for the benefit of our success here at TAMS. So very pleased to be um, part of the journey and a journey it is. When it comes to diversity and inclusion and equity, awareness is just a baseline. Now we have to get into the hard stuff of you mentioned, Barry. It, it is about behavior, organizational behavior, because all of us are a part of that. And we can definitely make a difference through every single interaction. So please to head this up. And um, if anyone out there in the larger audience wants to join um, education and training, uh, but more than love to welcome you. It is a journey and uh, it's true diversity. We strip it out, we make it real, and we encourage the right behavior so that we see and note the change. Barry, back to you. Thank you, Leslie, that was great. I love that. Um, yeah, and, and, and a shout out for uh, everybody, all of the leads that are speaking here. Uh, it's a great point you made, Leslie. You know, we are looking for people to uh, not just follow this conversation, but to, to get involved and to help out if they can. So uh, any of the audience members that, that want to contact us and to talk directly to the each leads or get involved and helping in any way they can, you know, please do join us. Um, it's, it's how things will change. Uh, right, so the next speaker uh, is going to be Claire Francis. Um, and uh, she and Sonia Carrier are co-leads uh, for resources. Um, and, and Claire, a bit of background on Claire, she's joined Willis Towers Watson uh, in London, uh, August of last year in a new role as Global Travel Category Manager. She's been in corporate travel for over 25 years. There's a common theme here. There's a, a lot of experience um, around the table, so to speak, here. Uh, and she worked in various travel management and procurement roles uh, during that period. One of the things she's, she noticed, particularly at HR Consulting, where she managed um, multiple supply procurement programs for clients, was that pretty much none or few included any kind of focus on diversity. And that's something she really wants to see change. Um, and on the home front note, uh, her and her family are chuffed because they've got a puppy dog. It's a real dog theme going through this uh, group, which is great because I'm a dog owner. Um, Kobe, now six months old, black Labrador, uh, joined the family in May. But to talk on a more serious note about resources for this group, uh, Claire, do you want to take it away? Brilliant. Thanks, Barry. Um... Barry, in fact, do you want to just do an intro into Sonia and oh, sorry, I'm yes. going to tag team the uh, education and training piece? Yes, but okay, sorry. Steal any of Sonia's funder. <laughs> right, okay, sorry. My apologies. I, I wasn't no uh, quite sure whether you were going to hand over within the call. But uh, so, so Sonia uh, has explained her, her background. is She's a, an East African Indian born in London uh, and currently a corporate account manager at British Airways. Ten years experience in the corporate, uh, corporate travel industry. Uh, and the biggest change that she'd like to see is equality for all in the travel industry, ensure that everyone is being judged on ability and talent. Uh, she too has been understandably working for BA, perhaps uh, working from home for approximately 900 days now. Uh, but she has fallen in love with working out again, uh, which is helping her to keep her sanity. So uh, Sonia and Claire, the floor is yours. Thank you, Barry. Um... We just wanted to sort of collectively talk about um, Claire and I's passions um, in this strand um, and basically we want to make diversity and inclusion a natural part of the thought process in corporate travel and not just focus around pricing and cost, which is normally is. And also we definitely want to create awareness, um, improve understanding and ensure everyone is judged on their merit regardless of race, gender or sexuality. So we're really passionate about these areas and this has sort of helped us in terms of getting involved in this strand. 
Thanks, Sonia. And, and Barry, I think, you know, you mentioned before, I, I've been managing travel procurement projects for, for around 20 years. And I have to say that diversity inclusion has been, you know, at, at the bottom of the focus areas. And that's really something that, you know, Sonia and I want to support with and provide guidance to everybody on the call today and working with all the relevant strands and, you know, give access to a real toolkit um, to the travel professionals. Um, so we want to support the travel industry by you know creating um, a new set of standards we really have some goals that we're trying to achieve we want to provide resource and information that will allow um, travel uh, travel buyers and, and travel professionals to incorporate diversity and inclusion within their travel procurement processes we want to raise awareness we want to simplify the process uh, across all the disciplines uh, within travel and provide support and guidance to, to travel professionals throughout. And I think, you know, there's a lot of areas that have been covered on the call today um, that certainly I know, you know, from my experience, uh, just don't factor in a lot of these areas and, and, and procurement processes today. And we want that to change. So with the support of the training and education um, team that we have here and, and the rest of the people on the strands, you know, we aim to provide guidance um, and toolkits and a platform um, to support everyone throughout. Thanks, Barry. Okay. Well, thank you, Sonia and Claire. That's, that's, that's again, you know, incredibly uh, powerful stuff because when it comes down to it, we need to get into some of the practical issues of, of how we can uh, affect change. Uh, so it's, it's as Leslie's uh, talked through and others have talked through about education and building awareness and challenging behaviours and challenging bias and understanding these issues. At the same time as well, we do need to know that there are practical things that we can actually do within uh, supply chain space. So tools that we can make available to, to our members and to the audience and to the industry uh, at large will be, will be really helpful. Okay, so the, uh, uh, in fact, the last speaker in terms of uh, strand uh, of diversity, inclusion, and equity is uh, Claire Barry. Uh, Claire is uh, currently Vice President of Sales at Synergy Global Housing um, and has nearly two decades of ex expertise uh, in the extended stay service department industry from a sales and marketing perspective. Um, Claire's also in her fifth year uh, serving as a board director for ITM, the UK uh, travel organisation, uh, members organisation for buyers and suppliers. And her aim is to attract talent at the grassroots level, irrespective of background or their personal circumstances have led you to from the past. Um, and her view is that if you're nurtured, encouraged, raw, raw talent doesn't discriminate. Um, very much like many of us, she seems to have a house full of uh, uh, pets, cats, dogs, all sorts, and, and some teenagers who might be walking around the camera in uh, the back of her session, but hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, so, Claire, over to you. Thanks, Barry. So, community is a broad undertaking, and we need you to please help us to really strive for what we're trying to succeed. I grew up in South Africa during the apartheid era. Schools were defined as white, black or coloured. Coloured, what a term. And the three did not mix. On weekends, I went to whites only beaches and noticed signs saying whites only public toilets. It wasn't by choice, but rather by political design. I knew nothing else as a child. It's just the way it was. In 1991, that all changed, but I had left school by then and chose not to go to university. I had made up my mind that at 17, I wanted to start a career. I wanted to leave home. So I did. So why do I share that with all of you? Because at 17, I had that choice, whilst many others did not. Why not? For many reasons, potentially. But all too frequently, it was due to all the things that this strand represents today. Opportunities due to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So how do we take my experience, in which many respects continues to live on in various guises and seek to make a difference? This community substrand needs your support, as I mentioned, to make this happen. So how do we look to serve the community and drive business travel as a career choice without bias? Many industries have been severely impacted this year and we know that our sector is one of the hardest hit. 
when I somehow found myself in the service department industry some 17 years ago, I certainly wasn't passionate that I wanted to be in the business travel sector. In fact, I didn't even really know that the business travel, exist, uh, travel existed or that I was actually even a part of it for quite a while until I started to figure it out. And now that I know marginally more after quite some time, 17 years, I count myself so lucky that I tripped over it. I also came to realize that there was so much more to it and it was fairly complex, but the options were great. And if only I'd had greater insight early on, I could have considered alternatives. So how does this community substrand of, of TAMS aim to do this? As Barry mentioned, attracting talent at grassroots, it is our duty to drive awareness to our industry, to attract raw talent, irrespective of education, background, race, gender, to highlight opportunities on the corporate buyer side or the supplier side, opportunities for sales or procurement, travel management, IT, marketing, facilities, consulting. We all know that this list is endless and that every role is pivotal, is pivotal in driving the success of the business travel ecosystem. We know this through our experience, but did we all know this at the outset? We need this to bring this to life and for this community substrand will enable us to do that through awareness at colleges, high schools, universities, to really build the force for the future. We need to come together and we need to look ahead, not just for the today, but for what lies ahead in years to come. And we can only do this with your support. Togetherness in education. Our industry is at risk. We need to face it. With so many redundancies and furloughs, we seek to partner with other associations to build upon the plethora of fantastic educational workshops, courses, webinars that have been held every day, which enhance skill sets and understanding of various sectors within the business travel industry. This education enhancement insists with motivation, purpose for the day-to-day, -day, help promoting uh, mental well-being, and a sense of achievement for those sitting at home. We have to aim to retain talent and entice people to stay in this great industry and to prevent what's potentially an industry brain drain. Recruitment support. Communi this community substrand seeks to provide support for people preparing for job interviews. How to prepare. What tools to enable candidates to feel confident. And from a charitable side, we're looking at both community and charity in this substrand. So considering how many do not have access to basic enablers, such as laptops, as an example, the aim is to support charities in ensuring that everyone has access to the basic technologies to support career aspirations. And we will look to corporations, such as many of yours, to help us along with partnering with local charities to make this happen. We will look to corporates to support this initiative so that everyone has the access to the tools that they need to enable them to make an informed choice. So in summary, the TAMS, DE and I community substrand aims to one, for everyone to have an equal opportunity to have a seat at the table. Two, to elevate awareness of the various positions and subsections within the business to travel industry. Three, to educate and enhance skill sets and prevent an industry, industry brain drain. Prepare and support for interviews, promotions, career pathing. And five, coordinate charitable efforts to ensure that no one's background affects their future ability to go and do great things. Together, we can do this, but we need you all to help make this happen. So from the community and charity substrand, thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. Uh, again, uh, great stuff. Uh, it, it, I'm really impressed with uh, what I am seeing is a mix of, um, you know, some great thoughts around diversity, inclusion, equity, but also lots of 
uh, passion and and kind of examples of how we're actually going to try and help people rather than you know this is this is clearly not just a talking shop um, so I'm, I'm really impressed with, with what I've heard so far I hope everybody else is too um, we're getting close to the end of the session but we do have uh, Linda um, on tap for us who's going to kind of wrap up and talk about next steps and um, things how people uh, source resources that people can tap into to uh, Join we do groups. have, um, just before um, you know, I go, we do have one question, which is where does age fit into this? I saw that. I saw yes. that. And I thought yes. that I was going to, I was going to lead you into this. Yeah. Oh, so, sorry. So, okay. It's okay. So <laughs> we have had, help. yeah, we had, no, it's, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. We had, we've had a question about age and there are other areas of the full dimensions that haven't been represented today on today's call, which, you know, as a group, we know we need to cover off and we're looking for volunteers for, but Linda's going to talk to that in a moment and, mm -hmm. and also about some of the other things that are coming up. But before we do that, Linda was mentioned uh, by Carol at the very outset and she's been brilliantly uh, masterminding things in the background and helping support us through this process of doing this webinar. Um, but a little bit of background on, on Linda before she uh, gives you the kind of next steps and, and what else is going on. Uh, she's the CEO of uh, APLBC, which is a digitally focused global res representation company for all hotel segments. Uh, but it's also coupled with a bespoke consultancy uh, via an AP gigs channel. Uh, if you'd have to ask Linda what that actually means. Um, she's got 18 years experience uh, in our industry and is passionate about continually educating herself and her team uh, to understand the needs of stakeholders. Um, and outside of work, I think you might have heard us mention uh, before, uh, she'd love to spend time with her family and her superhero son, who is AK Spider-Man at the moment, uh, really? but goes through different uh, Marvel costumes, but it's Spider-Man at the moment. So yeah. over to you, Linda, if you can tell us uh, a little bit more about, I'll answer that question for us and tell us about things that are coming up as well. That'd be great. Okay. Perfect. Um, what can I say? Um, I mean, listening to listening to the panel they're just super amazing and um you know yesterday I, I spoke to my dad and um for me i was telling him what we had been doing and you know i grew up in derby then i went back to ghana and you know he left this country um you know purely because he felt he wasn't judged on his merit because he was he is one of the top consultants in ghana and when he said thank you for doing this. I look at everybody here and I am so honored and so proud from the bottom of my heart to be part of this journey with all of you. Um, I just cannot believe that God has given me this opportunity um, to be able to do this and listen to so many inspiring people. So for me, that's my thank you to all of you. Um, just to give me this opportunity. Um, and now going back to the work stuff, um, we do have um, um, two strands that um, we are currently recruiting for. Um, so one of them um, is age and gender balance. So um, thank you for bringing that question up. Um, any volunteers uh, would be um, highly welcomed. Um, we also spoke this morning to um, Julie Sickle, um, and she will be leading um, the mental health and disability um, arm. And I was telling her that she was very lucky because, you know, um, she got away. If I'd spoken to her yesterday, she would be on this, this panel. Um, I think, you know, for us, you know, we are 25 people and this is a volunteer role. So, you know, anybody that wants to get involved, um, please, you know, just reach out to us. Um, you know, you've got the TAMS website. You can reach out to any one of us. Um, and we will be more than happy to have you. Um, for us, it's about making this a safe place to have those conversations. And I think, you know, each of you can feel the passion. You can see that, you know, collectively we all have a goal. Um, and, I, you know, I truly believe that we are the super fun group. Um, we do have to sing happy birthday after this, just so you know, because Carmen is not getting away with it. Today's her birthday, so I haven't forgotten, um, but we'll sing after this. Um, and a couple of things um, that I would like to announce is that, um, you know, next month we've got another session, um, which is really focusing on stop, think and listen. 
um, and that will be on the 29th. So you'll get more information um, about that. Um, we will be doing a couple of huddles as well as part of, um, you know, the Black History Month. Um, and then we'll be doing a series of other huddles. Uh, we do have a gift for the industry, uh, which we will hopefully be, um, you know, launching next month as well um, as part of that. Um, but for me, um, and I think, you know, for me and Carol as well, you know, we feel truly blessed um, to be able to, you know, I wouldn't say lead because I think that for me, I am learning so much. Um, I would say, you know, to be part of this journey with all of you, um, we feel truly blessed. So I'm not going to cry, Barry. So I'm going to hand it over to you. <laughs> okay. Thanks for not crying. Um, although, you know, that's kind of good. I'd like to see a bit of raw emotion every now and then. Um, <laughs> Okay, everybody, listen, fantastic. Thank you very much for all of our speakers. Thank you for everybody that's listened in on this uh, call. Uh, it has been recorded. If you uh, want to share the link, we will be promoting it anyway, but if you want to share the link with any colleagues, or any contacts that you have across industry, please do. Um, what we've popped up on screen as well is a number of different uh, points of contact where people can get more information. So the tamstravel.org website is now live. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the different aspects of TAMS, the different committees, what they do, what their focus is, uh, and, and groups of people like us who are passionate about different aspects of the travel industry uh, are there waiting, looking to help you, looking to offer advice and guidance. Um, uh, LinkedIn is also a space that people should try and get into more, more often because we need to spread the love, spread the message. Uh, get people in and involved, get them engaged and really make change happen. So we're going to wrap this up now. Uh, thank you very much for listening in. Thank you all of uh, our speakers. You've been superb. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Barry. Bye. Bye. Oh, boy. Happy oh, birthday, boy. Carmen. <laughs> Has she gone? Has she gone?